six, a helping hand with your land. Hey guys, Neil from Essex here. Today's video is the second in a two-part series that we did on a tour through New Holland's factory in New Holland, Pennsylvania. It's the factory where a lot of the hay tools, uh, mowers, disc binds, manure spreaders are all made and assembled. The first video that we would have done, if you want to hop back to the previous one, is going to be how all the parts for these pieces are made. This is a real factory. It's not just some kind of assembly plant. New Holland does actually manufacture the parts that are going into these machines. Uh, this second video though in the series is going to show all of those parts running down the assembly line and showing how those balers and disc mowers specifically are put together. Neil from Essex here with Tim Smith, the plant manager of the New Holland factory here in New Holland, Pennsylvania. Tim, what are you going to show us here today? Yep, yeah, we're going to take you out. We'll show you our Hay Tools, hay tools uh, plant here in New Holland, Pennsylvania. We're going to show you round bales being made. We'll show you this line. We'll show you uh, some square bales being made and then some other minor Hay Tools also all made in the same factory. So it's a privilege to show you, you know, from parts making right through to the finished products. So come with us here today, we'll give you a quick tour. So we're going to leave parts making, we're going to go over to assembly, welding and finishing. Okay. okay. So this side of the plant is all about uh, assembly, welding and then uh, final assembly and, and paint of course. Uh, this is a, a knife weld assembly that goes inside a round baler and um, you know, comes from our supplier Fisher Barton in the Midwest. It comes in on the dock, we pre-stage it here and when the operator is ready for it, you'll hit a button and the automated guided vehicle will come up, pick it up and drive it over. Out to the line. Drive it out to the cell, yep. So no, for, no man touches it, no fork truck. It's a little ATV. Cool. So what we got here, this is a, a, the tailgate side sheet robot. It's a motorman robot. So we have an operator on this side and that side. Makes a left and a right side sheet. Here you can see the form side sheet, which we will see over on a robotic press brake, right? So it comes over as a form blank. Then it all gets married up to make that side sheet. We'll go into a robotic press, into this uh, robotic welder. And um, you know the robot will then weld the side sheet and then it will come out and they get pre-staged like this and they go into a marriage. We come over and look at that. They get married in a cell like this on a, on a marriage fixture. Okay. And then they get pushed over into the assembly line. So then they come over into the assembly line. So even though we're we're still doing some welding and stuff in here, this is considered assembly now? No, this is pure welding. This, this is, okay. is welding feeding the assembly line. Okay. So the assembly line is behind you, and then this side is all, all welding. I guess the, the thought process is here is that you've got single piece flow, meaning I'm making side sheets. I marry the side sheets to the tailgate, and those tailgates come across and go right on the bale the same day, you know, within a couple of hours. Right. You know, so welding is only a couple of hours ahead of assembly, and they're all feeding in the side of the line. So here you can see that the, uh, the, the tailgate completed weld assembly goes into the line and uh, we pre-prime some areas, that's where the sledge is going to run so we're, you know, paint is not going to get in there when we assemble the sledge so we pre-prime it and you can see on the assembly line the unit behind does not have a tailgate and now this unit's got the tailgate. So those, those two halves are all robotically welded? Two halves are robotically welded. And then is the... It's married together manually Okay. And uh, to, to make this a weld assembly. We'll see the same concept in the main of the main frame up further up the line. The same concept. You want to, if you can see the video here, this is the uh, this is the main frame side sheet of the robot. So same concept. What we saw down there. So it's the main frame robot making the round bale of side sheet. So same concept. You've got uh, side sheet being welded together. What Tom is doing is laying on the sub weldments. We use a slot and tap design. He's doing some pre-tacking, which he's doing now, before he pushes it in and it'll go into the main cycle. In the meantime, the robot on the inside is welding the other side of the side sheet. Tom is tacking his parts in place and then he will send this side sheet into the robot. And then when that's finished, it will come back out and we'll have a finished left and a right side sheet. So what's going to happen here is Tom's finished his pre-weldments. He's going to index it in and then uh, the two robot arms will, will weld the side sheet and it's about a 16 minute cycle time. About 16 minutes, Tom? What's that? About 16 minutes welding. All it's, together? Yeah. It's around there. Yeah, okay. So you say there's two arms, there's two arms are working on the same part. Two arms working on the same part, yep. You can see better see the side. You can see in the side, yep. So when you when you program something like that, are you are they programming every movement of the robot or is there some intelligence in that? Yeah, I mean, when we program it, we program every move on the robot, but it does have some touch sensing. So it will come in, it will touch a seam, and it will say, okay, am I close or not close? You know, so 
there's a balance there. How much touch sensing you put into a program, the program will take longer. So there's an efficiency balance about how much touch sensing you want to how much cycle time you want. Uh -huh. Okay, so like the tailgate, now what's happening is you've got a side sheet left and a right. goes on this initial fixture, and what Danny's doing here, he'll marry with cross tubes and weld them together to make a pre-assembly. Okay, then he transfers it over to this uh, manipulator that can move it around, and then we'll do the finish out welding on the side. This uh, manipulator, right, which they hold, that holds the whole machine that they can twist and turn it any way they want to. So that's uh, pretty unique. It's not just standing there. They can twist it and turn it and get it in the right position. So our welders are standing up in this frame. Right. Back there, we don't, you know, Danny's sitting down, we don't like that. In this case, we can move the machine to the right angle that the guy's going to stand and weld. To rotate the thing yeah. around. And yeah. Yeah, so that's not hanging from the ceiling or anything. Right. It's right. grass. Yep. It's a pretty unique piece of equipment yeah. to do that. Then we put it on dolly wheels. At this point, it's got a serial number. So now it's tied to a customer. Okay. At this point, it gets a serial number, and we've built the order, so we're tracking from here forward to a customer order. So here's an example, right? So there you can see the serial number. Yep. So you can see the model, it's a 450, and tells you all the options that the unit has. And it's got a serial number, which that's stamped on the frame. And from this point forward, it's all serialized. So you guys typically aren't building just for company inventory, it's usually no, bound we are, for somewhere. Yeah, we're either building the wholesale or, or retail order. Yeah. So this is our roll robot machine. This is a new machine that we put in the last year and a half. Uh, it's a, 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 a Vizient uh, roll robot machine. It's basically got a CNC, CNC control, it's the latest technology in robot welding. It's a, a two-arm welder. And again, we'll put in a whole family of rolls. So, so I don't video this, but what you'll see behind is a family of rolls, okay, that will come out of a tax station. They come over and then they'll go into finished welding, okay? Um, and then the finished weldments are over here. So you can see they go over to the line in families of three. So James will bring over the tack rolls here. We put all the rolls into the machine and then the machine will do the finish out with welding. So, the bit that you said, don't video this, what is it you don't want him to show? Just well, so I don't mind video, it's just dirty. I wish it was cleaner. Oh. <laughs> That's all. You can take a video of it if you like, but like over here it's a lot cleaner. I love that. That's great. <laughs> so, all right, James, you good? So, this one's two shifts. Okay, makes all our rolls. Very high quality. And as we know, customer, this is all in the net part. So yeah. spatter is super critical in these rolls, right? So this process, we have a, a, a cleaning process that happens afterwards that makes sure that we know the quality sensitivity of these rolls with spatter on the rolls. So what you're gonna see, what you're seeing here is logistics delivering the components to the line. So if you came through the plant, you know, a couple of years ago, you would have seen wooden skids on the side of the line. With WCM, we only bring the inventory to the side of the line. That's enough to make two components. So this came from our warehouse, which is another building. They're making kits, which you can see these kit carts, they're called daughters. They ride inside of a mother cart, which carries three kits. They come from another building, they come down here, and you can see that we're delivering just enough components to make two parts. All the components are delivered in what we call their golden zone. So it's between their knees and their shoulders. So here you can see uh, the, the wheel hubs are delivered right in between you know, his waist and his shoulder. That's a heavy component, it's probably a 40 pound lift and he does not have to bend on the floor and pick that hub up. So uh, some of the efficiencies that WCM has provided for us. So we were looking earlier about the parts being cut out and this is, this is the uh, sledge frame arm right there, yep, right? Yeah, that's a sledge frame. We saw that being cut on the laser. So, you know, what you're seeing here is a 19-year-old Mazak that we've done a complete restoration on this robot. Huh. Um, and so what happens on this cell is we make the full sledge arm. So you see the arms come in that we've made being cut over on the laser. We buy that tube, we marry them together, and then they get robotically welded uh, in this cell. Okay. When they... So it... A piece like that could be easily human welded too. It could be human welded. You got better quality with robotic welding. You're doing a 360 weld right. around the tube. So obviously human, you know, that's difficult ergonomics for a human. Uh, so the robot would tend to do that better, right? And then you can see this is the finished serpentine that gets pushed over into the assembly line. Okay. I think the unique thing here at this plant is we don't have welding 
you know, and then as a separate department, welding is feeding directly into the line. Right. You can see that this weldment is what, four frames there, they're gonna go over into the assembly line. If there's any quality issues, we know about it right away. So single piece flow feeding directly into the line. So they come right across, you can see they get pre-primed, get yep. some paint put on because they're gonna marry on two metal surfaces and then they get dropped inside the frame. We've got some assembly state, we're on the assembly station. We've taken the rolls that we saw back, uh, welded back on the, rotor, on the roll robot. They've come in the side of the line and then they get picked up with this manipul manipulator and inserted inside the sledge assembly. I think what's unique is that you can see how much assembly we do before paint. You look down through the line, you know, we almost have a complete baler. Yeah. And they're going into the paint system. They're coming out of paint, we'll see on the finishing line, it's mainly so decals, rolls, rubber components. Some of that was Gives you an appreciation for the complexity underneath the shields when you see everything apart like yeah, that, right? you know? Yeah. What we're doing in this station, this is the tailgate we saw being welded earlier. It's hoisted up and married to the mainframe. So the guys are doing the beaver tail uh, uh, weld assembly, I mean, uh, assembly point there, where they're marrying the tailgate with the, uh, with the mainframe. So at that point, it's being pulled along the floor now, yep, right? Yep, it's pulled along the floor. I mean, the, uh, the, yep, they will index it along. About every 40 minutes, we're moving the line along. We try to give this guy all his tools on the top of his ladder, so he never have to carry things up and down. All his parts are up there. Um, you know, and all his uh, components and his tools. So what's happening here, this is the end of the assembly line, and uh, the round bale is basically ready to go to paint. So what Ellen will do at the last station, we'll charge the hydraulics, we'll open the tailgate, we'll do an inspection inside of the well quality, uh, we'll do some final assembly work uh, before we send it off, but the main uh, activity in this station is to check the hydraulics, look for, look for defects, and uh, uh, particularly on the welding side, and then uh, really check the hydraulics and, and the fit and function inside the, inside the frame. So here we've got, uh, at the end of the round baler line, we've got the finished product, you know, ready to go to paint, and so Ellen will drive that over to paint system. That kind of makes a neat footage, one going one way and one going the other. Yeah. So the same process we saw on round baler, we see on dismal conditioner. We do a lot of pre-assembly before paint. So the first thing we do is build the cutter bar, the modular cutter bar. And here you can see that we're building the modules. They've come from our machine shop where we've machined all the components. They've delivered in kits and we build the modular cutter bar. And Mary's, Mary's doing the final assembly. Then that cutter bar is lifted over and goes inside the frame that's being fed from welding. So what we see here, we're coming out of uh, this mode conditioner assembly, right? So we're making the cutter bar, and now we take the frame that we saw welded. Um, you know, here you got the, uh, the swap gate, right? And uh, be married together with uh, basically the rolls and the cutter bar. So the cutter bar is mounted underneath, put the roll in, put the swap gate in, goes on to the next station. So from this point onwards, it turns into field position and it's assembled in field position. Here it's still assembled in vertical. So what we have here, this is Dismo conditioner. This is the header weld assembly. So we have some sub weldments that come into the header robot. They make the frame, and then the frame gets put on dolly carts and gets pushed over to the assembly line. Again, a single piece flow, you know, maybe you'll see two headers between welding and the assembly line. So there, in terms of parts that are here, would these all be basically put on a jig just like the baler side yep, were? Yep, exactly. And I can't see a part here that was not made in this plant. So I think this is nearly all, nearly everything here. In fact, everything that I see here is made in this plant. Awesome. Yep. Frame. So the trail frame on the back side of the robot comes over and feeds into the line. So that'd be the top half of a 313 center, center pivot. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So we have a robot that welds it, comes out in the finished frames, it comes over to the frame room. We get the finished product that looks like this. 
and then that gets pushed across into the line and mounted to the to the disc mold. So you can see here, here you got it on the cart, then the cart gets pushed across and you come over here. The final station of assembly, the car gets rolled in, gets lifted up using a jack stand automatically, and then we put the wheel arm, the wheel arm mount, wheel arm uh, mounts on the on underneath, and then they get married to to the main frame to make the finished product. The very last station is a test station, so we come through the hood. Morning, Billy. So what we see over here is the final test station. It's got all the soundproofing around it. What uh, what our test is doing here, do some final touch up on weld. He's got a weld repair he's doing right there. So he does a full inspection, he do a weld repair. And then he will uh, test the unit, run it, and test it. And then he'll measure the heat of the bearings, record all the results, and then it will leave to go to paint. So with, with belts and rolls and stuff on at this point before paint. Yeah, this is unique in that we can put the belts, uh, the belts on it before paint. Uh, they'll come out painted and it's, and it's fine because they're, the roll, the rolls too, though. Rolls too, yep. Yep, the rolls can go through paint. And what? Because when you look at a machine, the rolls aren't painted, so. So we'll put a cover on them. Okay. Yeah, we'll put a we'll put a paper cover on them, but they're not hurt by the temperature. The temperature of the paint system is below. Uh, yeah. The temperature of the rubber, right? Huh. So, from a cosmetic standpoint, we cover them with uh, with brown paper, and then they we remove the brown paper when they come, they come out. out. We'll see that on the finishing line. Yep. So here we're in the test bay, okay, so what we'll do in the test bay, we have an inspection uh, where we run the unit and we check for certain quality features. We track the history in the, in the inspection gate, you can see what's recorded here. We'll look at weldments, we'll look at certain features that they got to look at, we'll highlight them on, the, on their prints and uh, give them examples of things they're supposed to look for. They record their results here and here they record their daily results and what they find and then we drive from that corrective actions. Uh, whether it go an interview an operator, go back to welding, go back to paint, go back to uh, component well, uh, forming if there's issues back there. And then we track our quality, what we see upstream in the final quality. If there were things that we found in final quality that should have been found here, we bring it back to this gate and we show those reports there. <laughs> so try to put as much on the shop floor as possible instead of having it in an office, do the work on the shop floor. It's gonna run that motor, that motor's gonna run the unit. Uh, he's going to run it for about 15 seconds and he's going to check uh, 15 minutes and he's going to check the temperature. So this is our environment lab as we walk through to, uh, we're going to go to paint, but you, as a plant we're, we're environmentally conscious. We're 100% recycled. We're very proud to say that we're 100% recycled. Um, in this lab, you can see this is where we bring our employees, we measure our environment impact. We, these are real peace lilies that we grow inside the plant that the employees are part of, uh, of watering and keeping alive and keeping an environment in the plant that where we can grow real peace lilies. And here we teach them about the amount of uh, carbon dioxide and oxygen that they need. The trough is made out of a scrapped uh, twine box made from round baler. <laughs> The, the box is made out of it creating, and the whole lab is made out of recycled materials. Here, from me down, from the plant manager down, we're all responsible to do environmental audits and check for environmental policies, making sure that we're recycling correctly, reusing our material. We take all our wood, we mulch it, and we sell it to uh, Martin's Mulch, a local provider. Okay. And then in the springtime, I buy it back from my yard. <laughs> and they charge you a fortune. Buy your pallets back again. Yeah. <laughs> To me, this is a unique part of the plant because it shows us how all our products come together, right? So we're coming into paint. Here's a Dismo conditioner that we just saw coming from that line. There's the round balers that we saw coming from assembly. We didn't show the box spreader, but here's the box spreader, right? Coming from the uh, spreader line, it's in a different building. We always say this is the product we never stand behind, right? That's the uh, El, uh, Hey Tools joke. So that comes from another building, stands here. You can see tongs coming in, you know, when we're running uh, side pull or center pull dismos, they're coming in. And then here you see a square baler. We didn't look at that line, but here you can see the square baler going around the paint system. So all our products that we make, they converge at this point and they all get hung on our paint system. And is there, since this is the convergence point, is this a congestion point? 
or, or if it's things, flowing and everything's flowing okay, it's not a congestion point. If okay. we get behind or the paint system goes down, this becomes congestion very quickly, right? So the product goes on and the product comes off. So you see re red round bales coming off. Right. They're going to go to the finishing line. So it all comes in through this point here. I'll take you and show you the load and the unload. Okay, so here's a good example, right? They just unloaded a square baler, and you can see when we unload a square baler, we put the flywheel on, uh, we put on uh, some of the, the, hubs. the, the hubs, yep, yeah. and things like that, and we hung some small components with it. Then they unloading the next square baler. So the same cart that that came off, a square baler goes on. So I take a square off, I put a square on. Okay. So they use the same cart, right? So we try to synchronize that way that we don't have a cart sitting around you know, when they put a square in, they take a square off. But uh, so the paint system is a liquid system. It's a manual system, so the operators paint. Um, here you can see a round baler and a pickup cell, so they hit the paint in red. We've got the operator inside the unit. He's painting inside the frame. When he goes on top of the unit, he'll go in a carriage that will lift him over the top of the unit and he'll be able to spray down on the unit. Huh. So on the powder side, it's robotic. On the liquid side, it's manual. And in what, in liquid, you're pretty much always running, what about colors? So colors, we run three colors, uh, C and H dark gray, uh, the red, and, and yellow. And they would mix that on one line, so they would just... Uh, in this case, we're going to try and run red all through here, but having said that, yep, if we have to change, we'll change. This pickup's, of course, going to be yellow, so he's yeah. going to go from red to yellow. Okay. Yep. But we got two booths, so we try to stay in color if we can, but in here, they're hitting a color change. Yeah. We've got an example of the operator going up. You see he's gone in a carriage that lifts him up so he's got clear line of sight. Um, remember, we saw him training on the simulator. Right. So we taught him how to paint. Let's wait to paint. He's in an air-conditioned suit, and um, that's what he does. Awesome. Okay, so we're inside our powder system. We got. I showed you the liquid system. This is the powder. So what we do here is uh, we spray on the powder. That's done in these three booths. We have a yellow booth with CNH dark gray and a red. In this case, we're running, we're running the CNH dark gray. You can see it's done with some bells, robot bells. It's literally spraying on a powder, and then it will go through a baking oven, and it's baked at 450 degrees um, to, to make a hardened, uh, hardened coat on the components. So, obviously, the components we sell through here have got to send through. Have got to be heat sensitive. You know, they've got to be able to take the 450 degrees. The paint quality, of course, is better. It's robotic, um, but it's really down to you know, whether they can take the heat. So some bearings and things like that we can't put through here. Um, but as many components as we can, we put through power. So the, the floor in here is clean. So how does that, it's electri what, electrostatically kept it's in there? Yeah, it's electrostatically charged and kept inside there. We do have some that comes out. So what we'll do is we'll vacuum it up yeah. and then we'll recycle that powder. So okay. we can vacuum this powder and recycle it. Um, and the other unique thing about the system, the ovens and everything, they all run off, uh, off landfill gas. So we have a pipeline that connects to Route 23 that goes all the way down to Lancaster landfill, and the entire system is driven off uh, the landfill gas from Lancaster County. Oh, cool. So thank you for your trash. <laughs> yeah. So you paint with trash and you mulch your yard with pallets. You got it, man. You weren't kidding about the yeah. environmental thing. I know, not kidding. <laughs> this is our safety lab. Okay, so uh, again, very important for us, like environment. We bring safety to the shop floor. We meet here as a team. We start with accidents. We look at what accidents we had, what was the root cause, how we prevent them. We go right through to preventative safety to say, let's look for unsafe conditions in the plant that we can fix. And then lastly, we look for unsafe behaviors that we can train on and educate. As a plant, this plant hit a million hours without a lost time accident. We hit that in 2000, late, uh, early 2016. That was the first time since 1973 that we had done that in this plant. Wow. Then 2017, we hit 2 million hours. That's the first time ever we've done that in this plant. And as we stand here today, we're at 2,900,000 hours uh, on the verge of hitting 3 million hours. Huh. So don't have an accident today, okay? <laughs> That's right. We'll ruin your record. Yeah. <laughs> so we're on the round baler finishing line. So what we do here is, uh, this is basically, we'll see the finished product coming off the paint system going down a nine station line. Okay, we'll go to the beginning of the line, but before we do, I wanted to show you this side. This is the kitting area. So you see these kits are coming in to this line. They go into what's called sub-assembly. So here you can see Mike, his kit came in, a net box, 
And then Mike will do some sub-assembly work. So here he's building inside the round bale and net box. So you put together the straps and the inside weld assemblies and mount that all together, the base and the top. It's got a hydraulic table that will go up and down. And then he'll slide that over and it will go into the assembly line. So the assembly line is going this way and the sub-assembly is going this from the side. Yep. Another example, so here you've got the pickup cell coming in from uh, yellow paint, right? So it's coming in, it gets hoisted on this scissor table, lifted up, they do all the sub-assembly, put the wing guard on, the rolls, they do the sub-assembly work, put some of the bands together. When they got the finished pickup, they put it on a dolly and it slides across to the assembly line. So assembly line's going this way every 40 minutes, sub-assembly's going this way every 40 minutes. So the synchronization of all these pieces. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's a miracle we make a baler. Yeah, it's not easy. But uh, no, it's, that's certainly the challenge. I mean, you know, our product isn't overly complex, but I often say our plant is complex because of the, you know, 11 whole goods um, and the sheer number of components that go in each whole goods all going and flowing in different directions. So yeah. the product itself is not overly complex, but the flow of the plant has certainly got some Yeah, the amount of stuff that's done here, yeah. all the different areas is... Yeah. It yeah, seems it like all there's has to be coordinated, so many so. opportunities for that thing not to be there. Exactly, exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, sometimes I wake up and think, wow, did that really happen today? But we managed to do it. I mean, you know, thankfully we've got the systems in place that we can coordinate and produce, you know, linearly yeah. in line with customer demand and by, uh, by customer order, you know. So in this case, you can see the yellow pickup came off. It's in line, that's serialized in line with that serialized unit, right? because that unit is specific to that pickup. The next unit may have a very different pickup on it, you know, so it will just come in serialized. And then the sub-components come in. Some are batched, like here you can see the rolls are batched. And then we have some Kanban components, and then they all come together right. and make, make the unit. But even if you batch something like that, you know that you need 10 on that cart, right. and they'll be consumed right. before something right. else comes in. Yep. Wow. If you look at a kit that come down from the hill, so here, here this kit had to arrive from another building coordinated with that pickup. So here you've got the shields related to that pickup that came down from the hill all married together into one kit. You see? And then the next pickup that'll come behind will have another kit behind it. And then when the next kit comes in, maybe it's a, a black pickup then you got, or different width, he's got to have the components associated with that. So certainly the coordination behind the scenes is certainly uh, some of our advantages and also some of our challenges. Right. Yep is uh, some of these kit carts that we see here, right? So these were designed by the operators. So this is not an engineer, this is not me, this is not an outside company. This was designed by the guys that do the work every day. Huh. And we use WCM to do that. So in this case, the operators designed this kit cart. It looks very tall. And the reason it's very tall is because it's going to go up and it's going to go in. These rolls are put in the top of the bale. So it will go up on our scissor lift. We'll see that assembly. But they designed it that you can put one roll in here, one roll in here. When they're ready for the roll, they'll drop this down, they'll push this lever down, and that roll will roll forward. So it's right where he needs it. So you have to reach over and pick up a heavy roll. He pushes this button, it rolls right to his waist. Huh. He's got all the bearings and all the components and designed that himself. We do the sub-assembly work here. We push it across and it'll go up in the scissor lift and we'll see that assembly on the finishing line. So this is the back of the assembly line. And uh, so what we see here is the product that's coming in from paint, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is put, put all the electronics. So the wire harnesses, um, you know, so here you can see the guys are threading the wire harnesses and uh, uh, basically all the things that couldn't be on the unit when, when it went through paint. Right. This is where he takes that roll unit up, you see, and then he takes it and does all the assembly work on top of the unit. So when he goes up to the unit, the rolls go up with him. Years ago, we used to carry those rolls up a ladder feed them into the baler, you know. Oh, I see. So his cart there is actually hooked onto the Yeah, platform. he just pushed it over from over there. Yeah, Remember yeah. we looked at it? He yeah. pushed it over onto those lips. When he goes up with his scissor, that goes up it with takes, it. It takes the cart with yeah, it. Yeah, so it's right where he wants it. Look where that roll is. It's right in his, right here, right. his lift spot, you know. Where years ago, they used to take that roll off the floor, off a skid, carry it up the steps and feed it through the rolls, right. you know, through the belts. Same with the belts. They make all this sub-assembly, they put all the belts on the roll, they put it on the cart, they do that over there. And um, when they drop this belt roll in, it lifts up this roll. See how, see that there? When they drop that in, it lifts this up, so that's up high. And you can see what they're doing here, they're, they're marrying the pickup. Now you can, again, look, you see different model, different right. style pickup to what we have behind. Every model's different, you know, I think that's, 
some of the things that's hard to appreciate today is the amount of variability in a round baler. You know, there's 90 different models we offer on this product line. And the complexity at a manufacturing level is just so high, you know. Right. But, uh, you know, we've got the systems that we're able to deal with. You can see the spring mount he's putting on. So what we got here is a kick cart that went up on his uh, lift. See the roll that was put in, uh, lifted up to his golden zone. He's able to then just reach it over and pass it over to his partner. Years ago, we would carry that roll up a ladder, uh, but now we've got through the WCM activities the ability to deliver it right in his golden zone. After he's installed that rubber roll, he's going to now lift the entire belt assembly with all the belts on. We're running endless belts today. He's going to lift those in and drop them all and thread the whole unit. After he's put it in, he's going to cut the belt, cut the straps, and the belt's going to fall down through. He's going to take that, hook it to the hoist, and it's going to pull it up through, pull the belts up through the roll, right where he wants them. Like, basically, he's threading the sledge. Okay, cut them loose. Yep. So he cuts them loose and then he's using this, uh, this lifting bracket, right, to be able to pull that up through. It's going to come up between the two rolls of the sledge. And then that will allow him to uh, feed the belts, feed the rolls. You know, years ago we used to do this with a man inside the machine and he would have to feed the rolls in between. Now we got to the place where we could do it like this, and just laying the belts up and he just passed the rolls in between. So we're at the end of the line. What happened is here, we put the wheels on, put the decals on, the doors, he drops the jack, and the unit's ready to roll off the end of the line. And so what we do here, we have a, a two test phase. So the line is running every 40 minutes which means the test bays have an hour and a half per unit. We'll put a, um, a PTO on the front, we'll actually hook it up to a motor, we'll run the unit in field mode, uh, run it at full speed, check the PTO, check the uh, pickup, look for interference, look for performance. We'll also actuate the duck bill. We'll look at uh, open and close tailgate. We'll do a full functional test on the, on the unit. It takes about, uh, about an hour and a half a unit full functional test. Uh -huh. And then here it goes to ship ready, okay? We will take a sample of about 2% of this product and take it to QC, random selection, either from the line or from the finish yard. And there we'll do a two day full inspection of the unit. Okay, and we'll go take a look at that. So it's our CQA area or customer quality area where we bring the product in and we'll do a full detail inspection. We'll spend two days in here. Take a look at this round baler. So what we've done here is uh, the inspector has, you know, basically put a PTO motor on the front. He's ran the unit. He's done everything we did in test, but he does a very microscopic detail inspection of weld, paint, uh, assembly and then function test as so, well. So 2%, I mean, that's one out of every 50. Yeah. Really, right. you're one taking of, that amount of effort. Right. And to it's a two day, about a day and a half to two day uh, process and then a full report out. Now the report out from me down, we come to the report out, we have a sheet. Uh, we score what he finds based yeah. on 3.6 point, 20 point or 50. A 50 means it's got some safety, uh, safety aspect to it, impacting the potential of the customer. Immediately stop ship. We then would check the yard and have a quarantine process. A 20 would be a warrantable. Again, we'd stop ship. Um, and then depending on the lowest severity ones, a six pointer, we may do you know, a fleet repair. Uh, some of the three cosmetics are things that we would see that may or may not a customer may see. Huh. So we'll do some dealer calibrations, which we always enjoy doing with Messix, right? Bring you guys up here to make sure that these guys are looking at it from a customer perspective. So your input as a dealer really reaches, uh, reaches these guys first and then makes its way back should to the product You should charge more line. for those units. What's that? So you should charge more well, for, for those, a CQA right? Unit? The, one yeah. that, uh, the one that had two, two days of, uh, yeah. of nitpicking done on it. Yeah, that's fantastic. 
Thank you, for Tim, for walking us around sure. today. That was absolutely fascinating. Great. Really appreciate the the quality and the care that you guys put into this stuff. It okay. is absolutely wonderful. So appreciate you showing that to us. Thanks today. very much. And we're very proud of our safety record, too. We're glad you made it through the tour and there was no accidents. <laughs> so thanks very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you.